Okay, welcome back, everyone. This is Brad Matheny. This is what I'm calling the mechanics of trading part two video. I uh, just posted part one. And again, this video is to try to help a friend of mine understand how to ride the trends more efficiently and identify what's going on. Now, I forgot to mention something in, in the first part of my video, and that is understanding that the impulse, the first impulse wave of any move is normally going to be shorter than the middle wave so hypothetically when you look at this move i want you to be aware that this initial move here is going to be shorter than waiting for the pullback to occur in this area than catching the middle wave here normally the middle wave the c wave and the D, uh, e wave are the biggest now you can get into areas like we had here where you have an impulse wave down which is fairly good sized followed by a c wave down here which is bigger followed by an e wave down here the ultimate low which is again almost close to this this uh same size as the c a little bit less but notice that the first wave is normally the shortest Wave five can be very short, but the A wave is normally pretty short. And you have to be aware that that first A wave, what I call the impulse wave, is really where you want to stay fairly cautious. Trade smaller amounts. Be prepared to understand that that rotational wave may end up rolling against you. So this initial wave has a chance to roll against you. So now, last I left off, we had gotten down to this bottom. And I, I've highlighted where you get these correctional waves and where you get these anchor bars. And we were discussing how these anchor bars play a fairly important role in setting up confirmation of a downward trend. So, and you can see as we move back over here, the way I'm teaching you with these anchor bars is to look at this this is a very clear anchor bar to the upside spread this a little bit drag this oops up see how the anchor bar the close is above the high of the previous three bars very solid anchor bar now we come in here and essentially we say buy above this level sell above this or below this level slightly below the uh, anchor bar itself so we'll move it just a little lower make this red make this green and again very simple rule directional trend rule okay a bullish anchor bar should confirm to the upside if it fails it'll move to the downside and again that's going to give us a fairly clear indication that this is failing and what would likely happen if it fails is we're going to see this roll down into an extended downward trend but we technically need to look for success or failure of any type of a trend that's occurring so same thing here rolling up above this level stalling up in this area moving down into this anchor bar would give us the same setup we'd be looking to sell below this level and potentially buy above this level notice that we never got above the buy level we did get down below the sell level and that gave us the opportunity to try to cap capture this area as our uh sweet spot our momentum area so again same thing here rolls down stays below resistance we establish this bottom we roll up we get an anchor bar okay anchor bar is now telling us that we're looking for an upward trend we would want to see confirmation if we do we are now moving in an upward trend we have again the previous fibonacci levels from the lows moving down and from this area, we've already readjusted this one down to this low or this high. Um, and we would want to establish where our 382 and 50 area is in that area, which we've already done right here. Let's see if I can get it. Make sure that we're right on target. Yep, we're pretty close. Okay, so now we have our resistance zone here. We have a little tiny one here. Now you can use this as a short-term confirmation of a 
uh, of, again, short-term rollover. In doing so, we're looking at a range of 382 to 50 resistance area right in this area. And now I'm going to spread this out so you can see it. What we've done, ladies and gentlemen, is we've established from this peak here down to this low, shrink it down just a little bit, the fact that we have critical resistance here, the longest term resistance right here. I'll make it a little different color. That is our very critical resistance, okay? This is really important to understand that this is the long-term critical resistance area. We have to get above this area to try to move higher in all instances. This is intermediate resistance here, and this is short-term resistance right down here. And this is our shortest term resistance is really basically saying, hey, this is going to be where we want to start becoming concerned that this downward trend is ending. So we get confirmation moves up into this resistance area. This may be the end of our trend because we're in this resistance area, but we have yet to move up into this area, which is our major resistance area. The confirmation of the anchor bar prompts another anchor bar here which again means that we're expecting the markets to try to have some momentum. We can again expect just visually, I'm going to try to do this for you to see uh, here. Uh, that's a line. That's fine. Uh, uh, let's see. Control C, Control V and come down here. So again, very easily we set up these upper and lower ranges and we want to try to see if price is going to get above or below these anchor bar ranges. It opens up well above it right here. We're rallying. We're through this uh, short-term resistance area, which is the 382 to 50 level from here to here. We're in the middle of the resistance area here. We should be long at this point trying to capture this move, and be, we should be looking for an initial pullback, which in initially happens right here. A little stalling pullback happens right here. So here you have your impulse move coming all the way from this lower level here, all the way up to this level here, coming back down and stalling above this resistance area. Now, obviously, we know that we've cleared this resistance, this longer term, intermediate term, and short term resistance. We have multiple anchor bars all the way up, including this one. Then we get this little pullback. You can initially cut, catch this as your impulse move, meaning here's the, the primary impulse move driving all the way through resistance. Now, of course, we have this big problem right here. We haven't gotten above this previous high, and this is a unique high. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So, yeah, 19 bars. This is a unique high, and this puts us at a point where when we get up here and we get to this, this black bar, and I'm going to delete these so you can see, when we get to this black bar, you tell me, is this an anchor bar or not? Is this uh, close below the previous bar's lows? So let's come over here and check it out. We'll go over here to the data window. We'll check out the closing price. Uh, 433.84. I know it's above these two. Let's check this one. Low 433.68. 433.84. So no, it is not an anchor bar. Okay. So we what we'd be looking for on this pullback is to determine whether or not it confirms to the downside. If it did, it would confirm down, indicating that we are in a downward trend. And if it fails, it will reject and continue to move higher. Remember, this trading is really all about looking for confirmation and rejection of key price factors. I'm going to try to show you other things to help you learn um, how to deploy these things more effectively. But we get rejection, in this case, back to the upside. Now we're looking at our A move here, our impulse move. Our slight corrections, I call that an impulse move. Now we're looking for our, our C move, our bigger broad move. And we continue to get these upward trends. Oops. We continue to get these upward uh, anchor bars all the way up. 
And again, I've gone over all of this. I could spend three videos going over all of this. But now notice RSI. RSI moves aggressively higher and into, I'll call it a neutral zone. So when you get RSI into kind of this 30 to 70 area, 60, you got 40 to 60, this is kind of a neutral zone. And I don't mind RSI because it tends to stay below or in the neutral trend on a, on a downtrend, and then it stays above or in the zone as a uh, in an uptrend. And you can see RSI kept you in an uptrend very solidly, only during big corrections, when the markets really make a very sharp turn, will you get something like that. Um, but again, generally, it provides you a very clear direction. And then I do like stochastics. And again, I had the opportunity to meet George C. Lane many times back in the 90s before he passed away. George C. Lane is the creator of stochastics. I spent many days hanging out with him in the speaking circuit uh, at the Futures conferences, uh, Futures magazine conferences back in the 90s, going over stochastics. And he basically told me that he can trade all day long <clears throat> with RSI and stochastics. And a basic theory was, as long as we got RSI up and stochastics up in flutter mode, this is called flutter, um, then you can safely try to anchor your trend into this mode, knowing that you have to just use the lowest three bar, lowest low of the three bars as some sort of a support level. So at this point, you have from here, uh, basically from here onward, you have unlimited opportunity to pretty much get long all you want. You just want to remember to use, if you get long here, you want to use the last three bars lows. So you want to try to basically say, look, here's my support. This is going to be my stop. If you get long on this breakout bar, you want to have your stop level down in here. If you get long over here, you want to have your stop level down in this area, kind of below the last three bars generally, okay? That's a general rule, the three bar low or the three bar, what's called belt line, which is the middle. <clears throat> now, using RSI and stochastics, I mentioned to my friend, and again, I'm doing this to try to help a friend, that you can use longer term stochastics, and hopefully I'll be able to do this for you. I'm going to go ahead and modify this, and I'm going to show you that you can use longer term stochastic to provide pretty clear understanding of the market. So I'm going to set this up to 19, uh, 35 and 11. Okay. Now this is a longer term stochastic and I want you to see how clean it rolls higher. Okay. I'm going to add one more. Uh, stochastic. Perfect. Hopefully I didn't. Yeah, I did. I got three of them. Okay, so I'll get rid of this. And now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to add another one. And this one's going to be slightly different than the other one, maybe a little bit longer. So I'm going to set this one up as 26, uh, 65, and maybe 15. So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm running very long-term broad scoping stochastics. A 26 stochastics uh, K value means it uses the, the last 26 trading days, a full month almost, to try to identify the, what's called the fast K or the fast stochastics. Then that is smooth, the fast K or fast stochastics is smoothed by 65 to create the stochastic K value. Then the stoch K value is smoothed by 15 to create the D value. You have the K value down here in blue, the D value down here in gold. Same thing goes here, 19, 35, 11. 19 is used to create the fast K. 35 is, is used smooth by 35 to create the K and then smooth by 11 to create the D. Now, look at where this confirms. Look at how we get some trending confirmation here. In this area, it hooks up and one bar later, basically here, let me come over here in the data window. Where does this actually hook? 38 right here and here. So we get really solid confirmation right there that we're in an uptrend. 
right when RSI moves into an uptrend as well. So as long as this stochastics block stays in an uptrend and you get confirmation across RSI. Now, remember, the shorter term stochastic moves into flutter over here. This is flutter, just like we had before. Anytime it stays above 80 percent uh, and it stays up in this area, even though it's the K is below the D, it's basically showing you that you, you've reached kind of a peak momentum. And now that momentum is is stalling, but still staying very elevated. Same thing here. It's when we roll down back over here, and I'll draw a line here that says, hey, we're now getting some weakness. And then this is showing that we wait for RSI to move down below the uh, 40 area, which is right here. I'll change this to red. And let's take a look at where that is. Wow, look at that. Right at a key breakdown in price. Here we have our anchor bar. Here we have our secondary anchor bar that breaks down. This then gives us confirmation. Now, granted, this is an impulse move down. So remember how I warned you about impulse moves? And again, I'm almost out of time. I hate how this runs out of time so quick. But remember how I warned you about impulse moves. Impulse moves can be very short-lived. So when you're looking at something like this, you get the breakdown. You know that you're in an impulse move because you had been trending up and now you're trending counter to the uptrend. At this point, this is a this should be taken with a very small position. You don't want to be overly aggressive. You want to try to wait for confirmation and confirmation would come when we get below this level here. This would be our area to say, OK, now we're moving into a broader downtrend if that were the case, and that would be our wave C, okay? So we're now looking at wave C, potential move if we get below this area. If we don't, we're moving back into our upper trending again. Now, this is the SPY. We only have a little bit to go, and here's our current trending. Let me shorten this, shorten this, shorten this. Oops. And now take a look at this, guys. Do you see how we roll down? We roll into sideways trading. This becomes fairly neutral. Okay, I get it. It's hard to understand what's going on here, but this is failure. This is failure right here to break below this level. So once we get this level, we roll up, we set up, keep an eye on the time, set up this little low here, set up this high here set up this high here hey guess what you got higher uh higher high higher low higher high higher low look higher low so up 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 very solid upward trending okay again low risk entry right in this area you do not have confirmation of trend yet this is an impulse move you got to be aware smaller position but look, you get very solid breakaway right here with a uh, with a anchor bar setting up right here to the upside. And we now get this move here. So this is an impulse move down, a correction that rolled into a downtrend, stalled. And we got very solid confirmation. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, giving us pretty solid confirmation that we're moving into an uptrend. You could also come in here and take a look at the Fibonacci level. Where was our resistance? Our resistance was right here between 382 and 50, which means that we had run right up into resistance, stalled out, and look, we get a key breakaway right here. Again, this is an impulse move. So here would be our entry right on this bar. We would be looking for essentially a move from here to wherever we get our first stall point which again if you follow it up minor stall minor stall minor stall major stall this is where you would try to protect your position and say hey this could be the end of the impulse move now that leads us as i'm into the last 20 seconds here into a potential wave three right here okay beginning of wave three could be big right here to the upside okay Running out of time again on this one. I'm going on to video number three.